Every once in a while, Al-Qaeda does something interesting, but today they did three interesting things. Let me summarize it for you. Uh, number one, they removed two older capture cards. Number two, they lowered the price of a current capture card. And number three, I got it here, they released a brand new capture card. This is the Elgato HD60X. Let's run over those three things real quick and let's do the first two while I'm unboxing this one. So, Elgato, oh gosh, I hate it when they do that. Like, come on. Uh, there we go. So Elgato cleaned up their capture card lineup to be a little bit more streamlined and to make a little bit more sense and just to kind of get rid of some outdated devices. Uh, for example, they got rid of the HD60S because it's very similar to the HD60S Plus, except it can't even do 4K. And it was released in what, 2015? I think it's about time we saw the end of life on that one. They also got rid of the HD60 Pro, which again, very similar to the HD60S, can't do anything over 1080-60, can't even pass through more than 1080-60. So both of those things, I think it's about time. As for the price lowering, the HD60S Plus is very dirty. <laughs> This probably looks terrible on camera. Give me one sec. Essentially what's happening here is the HD60X is an upgraded version of the S Plus, and so it's being released at the same price of the S Plus, so $199. And then the S Plus is going down to $179, at least. Let me double check. Yeah, $179, which you love to see that. You love to see new features added to something without any increase in price. So this is basically the new We'll call this the new Elgato HD60S Plus and this the new Elgato HD60S. That's just the way it goes sometimes. I do like the new body style. This is, a, I think, a much needed design overhaul. I mean, I remember when this design came out with the HD60S and you know, it's smaller and it's cleaner, but it's, it's too smooth. It's like a rock. It feels very dated, but one of the nice little overhauls given on this is that now both HDMIs are on the back which is great because it is kind of annoying to have two cables going into this side, maybe even three if you use the audio jack, and then one going on this side, and so it's always slipping off your desk and everything. Now, if you wanna set this on your desk, you can have it right up at the back of your desk and just have cables coming right out the back. I appreciate the thought going into the look here. We got, as usual, an HDMI cable and a USB-C to USB type A cable. So what were the upgrades from the HD60S Plus to the HD60X. Like, who is this for? What does this change? There are essentially mm, three main features added here. This thing is capable of 4K60 HDR pass-through, and it can record in either 1080-60 HDR or 4K30 SDR. The HD60S Plus also works very similarly to a cam link, where when you plug a camera into it, it's seen as a webcam without any software needed. You can plug it straight into Skype or Zoom or whatever, and it sees it as a webcam. All around, solid device. Let's go to the HD60X because there are a handful of features on this thing that are brand new to Elgato capture cards, at least at least brand new to the external USB ones. And all these new features are specifically designed for current generation gaming, especially current generation consoles like the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Feature number one, this device supports 1440p. So all of you gamers that are gaming in 1440p, previously the only capture card that you could use that supported that was the 4K60 Pro. So, an internal capture card. It's a nice addition. We've needed it in external capture cards. If you play on PC at all, you know that the sweet spot for monitors is 1440p, 144 hertz. You're getting high resolutions, high frame rates, and generally affordable monitors at that level. Speaking of high refresh rates, feature number two is high refresh rate pass-through. So this thing can pass through either 4K 60 HDR, 1440p 120 FPS SDR, or 1080p 240 hertz SDR. And while you're passing those through, what it's capable of capturing is 4K 30 HDR, 1440p 60 SDR or 1080p 60 HDR. But the third feature is kind of the big one that sets this apart because so far what this has done is basically matched the uh, Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra, which can do very close to, if not the exact same thing that I've mentioned this thing can do. So feature number three, kind of a big deal, is variable refresh rate pass through, which is about time. As far as I know, I think this is the very first capture card that can do variable refresh rate pass through. So am I wrong? I don't think any other capture card does. I don't even think the 4K60 Pro does that. I'll reach out to Elgato to double check, but I, if I'm wrong, 
I'll put an edit in the description, but I'm pretty sure this is the only one. But this is great because not only do PCs do variable refresh rate, like if you've been using a capture card and you're you're using either G-Sync or, or FreeSync on your monitor, you're getting screen tearing. At least if you're going through the capture card to your monitor, you're getting screen tearing. It hasn't been a huge issue for PCs because you can use multiple outs and you can send like 144 frames to your monitor and only 60 frames to your capture card, which is what most PC users do. But now, current gen consoles also use variable refresh rate. At least the Xbox Series X and Series S, also the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S all did, as far as I know, again, as far as, there's a lot of specs to know for this. Uh, I believe they all did variable refresh rate. It's really weird that PlayStation still doesn't do it. Like the PlayStation 5 has been much more popular of a console than the Xbox Series X, but the PlayStation doesn't do 1440p and it also doesn't do variable refresh rate where a lot, like all the Xboxes do that now. So the way variable refresh rate works on this is I mean, it's supposed to just work. As long as your monitor is using either HDMI 4 and VRR or AMD FreeSync, it just automatically activates. And you can actually see whether or not it's working. If you open up 4K Capture Utility, it'll show you in the top right corner what the frame rate is. And if you notice it fluctuates, then, then it's working. And the variable refresh rate will work anywhere between 48 and 120 frames per second. It's really weird to me that the PlayStation doesn't do, I can't like get that out of my head. The PlayStation? Not doing variable refresh rate? Seems like something we should be doing nowadays. And then of course, because this is designed for console streamers, you got the headphone jack right here. So if you're using a PlayStation 5 or a Switch and you need to use Elgato's chat link in order to capture chat and hear everything properly, you can plug it right into there. And one last thing about this, they also added a couple interesting things in terms of their scaling. Meaning uh, when you're passing through one resolution and it scales down to another resolution to make it uh, what I assume is just a little bit more user friendly. For example, if you're gaming in 4K60 HDR and that's the pass through that you're using in OBS or 4K60 Capture Utility, what it'll do is it'll downscale, rather than downscaling to 4K30, you'll have the option to downscale to 1080 60 HDR, which again, is the maximum resolution on Twitch anyway. So I think it makes the most sense. If you're gaming in 1440p 120 FPS and that's what's passing through here to your monitor, in OBS, it'll capture 1440p 60. However, if you're looking for some high frame rate gameplay to record, maybe you want some slow-mo for some montages, you can game in 1080 240 FPS and OBS or 4K Capture Utility will be able to capture in 1080 120 FPS. Being able to capture super high frame rates like that is pretty dope. Hey, so look, here, uh, here's what happened. Uh, I got summoned for dinner and then I came back and I completely forgot where we were at with talking about this capture card. But, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we would plug it in and we would test it, but like it's a capture card. I don't think we need to do that. Like it's, it's just this plus a couple cool things. We know how it works. So instead, uh, if you can give me like 30 more seconds, like, don't click any recommended videos. Just, 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 just a second. Give me like a tiny bit more attention. I know you can muster that up. I want to ask, what do you expect out of capture cards? Like, wh where are these going? And I ask myself that question a lot because I like to think that capture cards have a lot of potential to expand. Some people think that capture cards are just a tool and as resolutions and frame rates increase in our gaming consoles and PCs, as uh, should these, these should follow suit and that's it. But uh, I'd like to know where you think they're gonna go because there are a couple areas where I feel like I'd love to see explore. I'd love to see a much more simpler version of something like this that can attach to a mobile device via USB-C, something that docks right onto it. Um, not only for IRL streaming, but also for just as, as just chatting content increases and explodes as fast as it's been exploding, uh, to be able to plug a camera directly into an iPad and completely go live and have a whole interface there, I, I think is, is next level streaming. You don't have to build a massive PC to have a high level stream. I mean, I guess these have USB-C on them. There's no reason why that shouldn't be able to do that, but I, I don't want something, like if I want to go out and stream going on a walk or going to an event or, or at some kind of convention, I don't want to have this dangling, hanging off of, you know, an iPad mini that I've got wrapped around my waist or something. Like I, I, wanna, I want something that connects 
to a, to a tablet. I spent a lot of time trying to think of what the future meta of streaming is gonna be like. Is IRL going to be much bigger in the future or in general, are most people gonna to wanna to sit down and stream from their rooms? Like, do we need some kind of IRL stream? I don't know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments down below and also hit the like button if you haven't yet. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. We've got a, a relatively massive, like is it, is it overselling it if I say massive announcement? Probably overselling it. I think it's massive. I'm excited about it though. Uh, subscribe to the channel, we get some big stuff coming up. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this relatively shorter video. And as always, happy streaming.